Today we're talking about the Migrant Caravan, the largest group of people I've seen together since Apple released their iPhone X. Oh boy do I feel sorry for that asylum clerk. Hope you aren't planning on going on vacation anytime in the next few years. One major disadvantage to traveling with a caravan is that a city's worth of people would have trouble all sneaking across the border at the same time. So they're going to be looking for a legal option, which I guess is a pretty significant bipartisan improvement in the system. And by the way, I want people to come in. I want tremendous numbers of people to come in. And we're going to have that big, beautiful door in the wall. But you know what? They have to come in through a process. They have to come in legally. Well, he might want to consider revising those construction plans a little. Anyways, the main question is, what's going to happen as this caravan gets closer to the United States? To answer that question, let's go back in time to April of this year. A dramatic scene on the U.S.-Mexico border. Migrants from Central America gathering along a fence between Tijuana and San Diego. They are part of a migrant caravan that has been headed to the U.S. border for weeks. Okay, first, boy am I glad we have the wall there. Where else would the immigrants be able to sit? So what happened? Because based on that clip, I'm guessing they probably decided to climb down on the U.S. side. Well, one consistent story that might surprise you, because let's be honest, when Americans think of immigration, well, it's all Mexico south of the border. I mean, I know there's a Honduras, but that's like mini Mexico, right? Nope, because I'll tell you one non-American country that isn't super thrilled to have thousands of migrants walking through it. And brace yourself, Republicans, because this might be your worst nightmare incarnate. Men and women, some with young children and babies drenched in sweat, began storming and climbing the barrier, tearing it down. The mass of migrants then crammed onto this thin border bridge, chanting, yes, we can, only to be blocked by another gate on the Mexican side, where riot police deployed pepper spray. Mexico really is not a fan of these caravans. Any trumpeters watching bet you weren't expecting to be rooting for the Mexican government in an episode about immigration. The key question right now is whether the Mexican government will be able to forcibly disperse this caravan as it did with the group in spring. Turns out that when you cross Mexico to get to America without filing paperwork, you're illegally entering Mexico and they deported most of the last caravan that were traveling to America. Regarding this most recent caravan, the Mexican government has already said it won't provide travel visas to members of that caravan, and that people who don't seek asylum in Mexico will be deportable. This speaks to a larger problem in Mexico though, because we aren't seeing the same action as last time. On one hand, you have the Mexican president and LL Bean catalog model, Nieto, saying Mexico does not allow people to enter our territory illegally and much less so violently. But, on the other hand, you have President-elect AMLO and the general public being concerned that their government is becoming Trump's puppet, saying things like, The wall already exists. It's called Mexico. Congratulations, Mr. Trump. Now that might seem odd, but... The UN estimates that over 500,000 migrants illegally cross into Mexico every year in order to come to the U.S. Mexico is pushing a plan that's already deported more than half a million Central Americans. Talk about goal line defense. Immigration hawks, this may seem like the person you don't want to talk to throwing in the door and saying, don't worry, I locked it so no one else will bother us. But if you look at the United States unauthorized border crossings, you'll see it's quickly becoming more Central American than Mexican. So what's the problem? Will all of this resolve itself in Mexico? Well, maybe not. In a Washington Post article called Spoiler Alert, Why Mexico Isn't Stopping the Migrant Caravan, they describe a group of Mexican riot police forming a barricade against the caravan. When the migrants approached the police checkpoint, officers pleaded with them to apply for legal status in Mexico. There were empty buses ready to take them for processing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Hey, illegal immigrants, we've got all these buses here to take you to processing. Why don't you just hop right in? Now, the caravan decided to pass on the offer and riot police threw their gear into a bus and drove away. Rather than deporting this massive caravan, Mexican authorities are pushing for Central Americans to apply for legal status in Mexico. 
A strategy that seems to be lessening the caravan. David and his wife Sandy are not the only immigrants waiting here to get news about their refugee asylum requests. There are many others. One migrant just told CGTN, it feels like we live here 24-7. If they are not granted asylum, the family plans to join the migrant caravan and, though they have no visas, try to make their way into the United States. So let me throw a few numbers at you. The caravan started at about 7,300 people, which, wow, that's a ton of people. Although a third of them, about 2,500, have been blocked at the Mexican border. Another quarter, about 1,700, are having asylum applications currently being processed in Mexico. And just over 100 people have surrendered themselves to Mexican authorities for voluntary deportation. This is important because this caravan is still really far away from the United States, and it will take weeks for them to get to the border. So Mexican domestic politics will play a huge part in the success of this caravan. It's predicted that they'll be arriving after the midterms, so we'll see if there's even a country they'll want to go to by then. Oh, who won in Texas? Nah, we'll take our chances in Tijuana, thank you. So the larger question remains, what's going to happen to the remaining members who are walking to the US-Mexico border? You've probably heard that the Trump administration is expected to deploy hundreds of additional troops to the US-Mexico border. They will not have authority to apprehend illegal immigrants, but will work on other aspects of border security, reinforcing barriers and providing reconnaissance along the border. So we're sending troops to the U.S.-Mexico border to surveil and reinforce structures. That can't hurt, especially seeing what happened to the Mexican border. Although that won't really solve the overarching problem, because caravan immigrants don't legally enter this country. Here's what happened to the last set that made it to the border. First, the majority were deported or granted asylum in Mexico, but of the remaining few, 403 were referred to the United States authorities for credible fear interviews, the first step towards applying for asylum in the United States. And because most people who aren't well-off middle-aged white people don't leave everything they know to walk across the country, of that group who were referred, more than 90% of them passed that step. So woohoo! Now you're in the system and can breathe the sense of American freedom from the detention center you're being housed at. It's up to that officer to decide whether he believes that they have a credible fear, and if they do, then they begin the asylum process. That could be um, being in detention for an undetermined amount of time, or it's up to the officers and the, um, the administration. Alright, so you get stuck in a detention center for an amount of time determined by Donald Trump and an immigration officer. I'm not sure if I can imagine two people I would want less determining that amount of time. Unfortunately for the administration, there are laws that say you cannot indefinitely detain people. See my episode on the Supreme Court case of Zidvidas v. Davis for more on that. Of the last caravan, three have won asylum, about 30 remain in detention, and the majority have been released as their asylum cases wind through the immigration courts. Despite the fact that only 20% of asylum seekers win their cases, asylum seekers get released in a matter of weeks or months in a move that Donald Trump criticizes. Late Friday, President Trump signed a memo ordering the end of a policy known as catch and release. Under that policy, undocumented immigrants are released from detention while awaiting a court hearing on their status. That did not pan out. The argument is, if you don't think you're going to be granted asylum, just don't show up to court and join all the people who are here illegally. Unfortunately for Trump, the Supreme Court specifically gave full constitutional rights to any person legally or illegally in the United States jurisdiction, and the Constitution was pretty clear about not being able to detain someone forever when they haven't committed a crime, and applying for asylum is pretty much the opposite of a crime. Specifically, if the government can't show removal in the foreseeable future, they can't hold you for more than 6 months, and for kids, that's 20 days. Unless, of course, you separate hundreds of families and can't keep track of any of it. This leads to one more question. Do you have to take asylum requests? Well, this is where the government has a little room to engage in the morally dubious. Going back to the last caravan we saw. 
as you said, there were eight last night. And at about noon local time in Tijuana, they let in about six more. So it's a trickle of the uh, asylum claimants that they're allowing into the port of entry right there. So we had hundreds of people living in makeshift tents and we were saying, well, we can see six of your asylum claims now. The rest of you are going to have to wait because we're leaning hard on the inefficiencies of our system here. According to immigration authorities, that port of entry had less capacity than my apartment's elevator. And we were only letting six to eight people in at a time. U.S. officials are trying to keep the group of nearly 200 people out. They want asylum, but have not been allowed to start the application process. Customs and Border Protection officials say the San Diego port of entry is already full. This might make you think, well, then why not try to cross the border illegally? Well, because that would be like trying to rob a bank when the police show up to investigate a robbery that just happened there. We have hundreds of border patrol agents and national guardsmen there. So what is the fate of this caravan? Well, it's still largely in Mexico's hands and an internal debate is occurring about whether to use military force, police force, or no force to break up this group. If they make it to the United States border, they'll probably trickle into our detention centers with asylum applications and then, in a few months, be released with work patents until a few years down the line when their applications either get accepted or rejected. Of course, in this political climate, expect the unexpected, but I'm not very creative, so I'll stick to reporting the expected. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello, YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Or do it the old fashioned way by clicking the subscribe button below. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring, and you can click here to see my episode on Zidvidas v. Davis. Remember to give me a thumbs up, and as always, thank you for watching.